Welcome to Learn, Make, Share. My name is Jared and I work at the Idea Lab at the Denver Public Library. These videos will guide you step by step to learn something new, ranging from arts and crafts to software and technology. Today, we'll be learning about Inkscape, a free vector program used to create graphic designs. I'll show you the tools so you can create your own shapes and objects. Let's go ahead and dive in. As a reminder, Everyone works their own pace, so please pause the video when you need to and rewind if something isn't clear. To use Inkscape, you'll need to download the software to your computer. I would also recommend using a mouse and keyboard for ease of use, but it's not absolutely necessary. One of the best parts about Inkscape is it's free to download and use, and to me it's just as powerful as Adobe Illustrator when it comes to making designs. Go to your browser and in the address bar, search inkscape.org. This will bring you to Inkscape's home page. You will then click on the Download Now tab. Choose the download option that best fits your operating system on your computer. Then follow the instructions to complete the download. Once downloaded, you can search for Inkscape on your computer or select the icon to open the application. It looks like the mountaintop here on the screen. Inkscape is a vector graphics editor, but you're probably asking yourself, what is a vector? Great question. Simply put, a vector is mathematically generated lines and shapes compared to raster graphics files like PNGs and JPEGs, which are made of tiny pixels. Let's look at the two Denver Library logos in front of me. One is an image and one is a vector. When zoomed out, it is hard to tell which is which. But when we zoom in, you can see the image has tiny little pixels that get blurry, while our vector on the other side remains perfect because it's made of lines and shapes. Meaning you could have your design on a business card or the side of a 50 foot building and with a vector, it will come out looking great not distorted or altered. If you haven't yet, go ahead and open Inkscape. We are now able to view the entire interface. We have our toolbar on the left side of our page, tool options located on the top of the page below the menu bar, and the highlighted rectangle in the middle of our section is our canvas. This is the workspace where the design will go. When working with specific measurements, it's important to keep your design within the canvas. For our practice today, we'll do the same. To move around Inkscape, you can use the scroll bars on the right side and bottom of the page. If you are using a mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to go up and down the page. Now, try clicking and holding the scroll wheel in. Notice the cursor turns into four points. This indicates you can shift your view in any direction and also move around your canvas. If you ever get lost in your workspace and can't see your canvas, press the number five. This will always bring you back to your canvas. Another important function is how to zoom in and zoom out of our canvas. We have two options to do this. One option is by going up to view, down to zoom, and we can use the control zoom in and zoom out to go in and out of our canvas. Another option is by using our computer mouse. Hold down control and with your mouse scroll wheel, slowly zoom in and out of your canvas. Notice wherever our cursor is, is where we will zoom in and out of. If we ever want to center our canvas again, remember to press five. The first tool Inkscape starts us off with is the select tool. 
This tool looks like an arrow. It allows us to move, rotate, and resize our objects. But more on that in a second. Let's make our first shape. Select the Rectangles and Squares tool in the toolbar. You can hover over a tool to see a description and a shortcut. Once selected, a gray gradient will populate behind the tool you have chosen. Also notice in our crosshairs, there's a little square to let us know we've selected that tool. Left click and drag on the canvas to create your square or rectangle. Try again and press control this time. This will give you a perfect square. Notice in the top left corner and in the bottom right corner, there are two mini squares. Click and hold these to resize the shape. The circle in the top right corner will round the edges of the rectangle or square you've created. The circle behind this will do this as well. If you want to go back to your normal square, just click and drag the two circles in the corner. Now, if we want to move our objects, we need to go back to the Select tool. We can now move our objects around. You'll know which shape is selected because of the dashed lines around it, sometimes called marching ants. You can also see the arrows that are around our shape. If I click on the arrow and drag it out, this will resize my shape. You can do this with any one of the arrows on the rectangular square you've created. Now that we have practiced our squares and rectangles tool, let's move to the circle tool. Click the pink circle tool in the toolbar. The cursor will have a circle in the crosshairs. Left click and drag on the canvas to make a circle. To make a perfect circle, press Control at the same time. Let go to complete it. Notice our tool options have changed depending on the tool we've selected. Go to the tool options at the top of the screen. Notice our start and end options. This controls the angle of our circle's arc point. Where it says start, click the plus until you get around 30. Notice our circle changing below. Do the same on the end and do it with the negative side until you get around negative 30. You can see our circle's arc point has changed from being a complete circle. Make another circle. Notice our circle keeps the same arc. To change this back, go up to the top where the tool option says make the shape a whole ellipse. Click and our circle will be complete again. Go to the select tool to be able to move and adjust our shapes. Notice our arc circle resembles a certain arcade game character. Let's get our Pac-Man in line to eat the circle dots we created. We can also resize our circle dots here with the select tool. Before we move on, our canvas is looking a little full, so let's delete some objects. To delete, you must be on the Select tool, and you need to click on the object you want to delete. Press Delete, and your object will be deleted. You can also select your object and right-click and press Delete to get rid of an object. If you have made a mistake, 
Inkscape makes it easy to undo the previous action. To do this, you can go to Edit, Undo. A simpler way to do this action is if you press Control and tap Z. Do this slowly to not repeat a lot of previous actions. Let's delete all the objects we've made so far. Select and delete each one. Now let's move to the Stars and Polygons tool, which is one of my favorites. This is beneath the Circle tool and has a yellow star and pentagon. Once selected, the cursor will have a star in the crosshairs. Notice the tool options have changed again. To the far left of the tool options, you can select to create a star or polygon. Let's leave it on the stars for now. Left click and drag on the canvas to make a star. This creates a common star with five points. But what if we wanted to add more points to our star? Well, I have good news. Inkscape allows us to do this easily. With your star selected, remember it has the dashed lines or marching ants around it. Go up to the tool options and where it says corners, you can add more corners to your star. Let's add our corners until we reach 10. You are also able to change the spoke ratio, which is right next to it. This concentrates the radius to the innermost point or the outermost point of the star. Let's decrease our spoke ratio to around 0.3. You can also round the corners of your star with the rounded tool option. Let's increase to 0.1 and round our corners of our star. You can really see how much our shape has changed. To make the star into an even more unique geometric shape, click inside the square handle of the star. Drag across until you create another unique geometric shape. Release when you've created the design you like. As you can see, the shape changes considerably by doing this. This is a fun tool to use, and I encourage you to experiment with these tool options to create other stars. You can also try this out with the polygon option as well. You can switch from stars to polygons in the tool options above. Our last tool we will be discussing is the freehand line tool. This tool looks like a yellow pencil in the toolbar. Left click and drag your mouse and make a letter M without releasing it. The green transparent line is what you are creating. Once made, release the mouse and the line will show. You are probably noticing the line is not very smooth. To make the line smoother, in the tool options, increase the smoothing to 10. Draw another M. See how the curves are more rounded? This is great for drawing freely and making paths. Another fun way to make your shapes unique is by changing the fill color. Go back up to the select tool, select a shape you want to change the fill color on, and you have your options below to select what color you want to make them. This is a great way to add style to your shapes. One of the most important things to do is saving your work. I suggest doing this periodically to not lose the designs you are creating. To save your project, go to File, Save As, and name your file beside File Name. I'm going to call mine Shape Practice. 
The most common way to save vector files is as an SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. This is used to save two-dimensional graphics. There are other options if you need them under Save As Type. If you are in the folder you want to save to, click Save to complete the process. I want to thank you for making with me today. I'm sure you will create some amazing designs. I want to encourage you to keep practicing with the tools we went over. If you want to learn more about Inkscape, check out some of the resources I've linked in the description, including information about how to join our live discussion about Inkscape. If you want to show off what you've made, tag us on social media with hashtag IdealabMakes. Thank you again for joining me.